Greg Cazillo, Cazillo.com. Let's go over flash exposure today, how it works, and how easy it is. Yes, this is super easy. Once you already know the basics of the exposure triangle, your ISO, your aperture, or your f-stop, and the shutter speed, you've almost got it down. It's that easy. Now, your sensitivity, a little review, a little review, how does that sound? ISO is the sensitivity of the sensor or of the film that you're using. Aperture, or f-stop, is the amount of light that you're letting in to that sensor. And then your shutter speed is the amount of time that you're exposing it. All right, there's one more component that we're gonna add in here, and that's this nice little green box in the middle. That's flash. Now, when we add flash, it all comes down to one thing. That the flash power, hold on, hold on, hold on, let me back up. I'm going to screw you up if I say it that way. The shutter speed only affects the ambient light in the scene. That's it. Does not affect the flash. Rewind. The shutter speed only affects the ambient light in the scene. Got that? Shutter speed only affects the ambient light in the scene, not the flash, okay? So in other words, the flash can be controlled by the ISO as well as the aperture, okay? When we are adding flash, the, a, one, a couple more components of that are the flash power and the distance, okay? As well as uh, modifiers, anything else that you would do to it, put a some kind of a soft box or a grid or any of those things, they also affect it. Um, but look at it this way, okay? I'm gonna draw a nice dotted line right here, okay? Everything down here affects the flash and everything down here, the flash affects it, okay? Everything above this line though, which is only shutter, is only changing your uh, ambient light in the scene. Now, there are a couple of considerations uh, with your time or your shutter, and that's the flash sync speed. You need to be sure that your flash sync speed is uh, typically on most cameras um, below 1 250th of a second uh, in order to make sure that the flash is going off when the shutter is fully open. Now, there are some settings on some cameras, uh, it's called FPSS or uh, focal point shutter on the Nikon cameras, uh, sorry, focal plane shutter, uh, and also a high speed sync on the Canons where you can actually connect the, cam the flash to the camera in order to get a higher sync speed, uh, but that's something that we won't really talk about today. It's a really cool effect, you can definitely do it, uh, but you do lose some power and you have to be directly connected with via a cable or on camera in order to make it work. So let's do this once more so that you really understand it. This is how easy this is, okay? Sensitivity is your ISO and your aperture. They affect the flash power, okay? Flash power can also be affected by the amount of light in the, or I'm sorry, the, the amount of power in the flash and also the distance, okay? Shutter is only available light. That's it. That easy, let me show you some examples. Something I forgot, and that's how do I set my camera when I'm working with flash? Or how do I teach people to set their camera? And that's the important part of it. You know, you want to master this. If you don't want to master photography and you just want to get through it and just do okay in it, you probably shouldn't be watching my videos. You probably wouldn't be watching my videos anyway. But since you're here, you probably want to master it. You probably want to get better at it and do everything you can to really be proficient at it, all right? So let's start off by number one, setting your shutter speed below 1 250th of a second. 
Now I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you can do this, you can do that, there's other modes and things in the newer cameras, but for make-believe for right now, just think about it and set it up so that you think, look, I can't go above 1 250th or whatever your camera says you can't. All right, let's just start there just for learning's sake, okay? Second, set your camera on manual. You should already know how your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO work. So you should be proficient at that, be able to get a normal exposure without issue, okay? Last thing, set the flash on manual, okay? Everybody wants to sit here and play with TTL, play with the auto modes. Uh-uh. We don't want those. We don't want to play with those because they're not going to allow us to get proficient, okay? We're not going to be able to master that flash or the strobe or multiple flashes if we're sitting there playing with TTL and auto modes. All right? You're not going to learn that way. You've got to learn by putting it on manual. Trust me. This is how I learned it and it's the best way to do it. All right? So how do those manual modes work on the flash? It's actually very very easy. Uh, one over one is full power. That's the most amount of power that's kind of going to come out of that flash. Then one half, one over two, is half power or one stop down. And then if you go down again, down to one quarter, eighth, sixteenth, and uh, most of my strobes go down to, I think it's one one twenty-eighth power in the Nikons. I think most Canons do the same. Uh, so, in other words, you're incrementally by a half all the way down, you're getting less and less light. So the most power is one over one. The least amount of power is either 1 64th or 1 1 28th, um, somewhere down in that range. Hopefully you understood that. And I got one little segment, more segment for you where I'm finally going to show you those examples. All right, so we just learned the basics of exposure with flash. And so here's our lighting setup. Uh, this is our main light and the only one, the only flash, I should say, that is uh, affecting the scene. Uh, our model is a nice Nikon F5 sitting here. Uh, obviously, this is our camera angle from over here. And as I said, this flash over here is not affecting the scene. It's only being used to trigger the SP900 on the stand. So that's our scene. And here's our first exposure. Now, there's no flash on this. And this is how I really suggest everyone start off. When they're taking a flash photo, get a good ambient exposure first without flash ambient only and that allows you to tweak everything get a good setting then when you add the flash it's going to make it a lot easier all right start off this way trust me it works so we look a little underexposed here especially in the camera so i'm going to adjust that up a little bit a little bit higher iso uh, my 1 30th of a second shutter speed is fine uh, since I am on a tripod, it's not an issue. Now we're going to add our flash. So we're, our flash is here, and it looks a little hot. It's a little bit too strong. I really don't want to move it away uh, since the this sh shadow is already pretty harsh. If I move it farther away, it's going to get even harsher. Uh, so um, the flash is already, its power setting is already all the way down. Uh, so that's not an option either. I don't want to change my distance. I can't change the power down anymore. So the next best thing is to adjust my ISO or my aperture. Now, I don't want to change my aperture because I got this nice Bocalicious, really nice, soft, buttery background. I want to keep that. You know, I want to keep it nice and soft. I don't want to have anything in the background to distract. So ISO is our best option. Now, ISO is going to affect both the ambient light as well as the flash so let's go ahead and do that so you'll see the ambient has come down as well as the flash I think that's a good balance with the flash uh, but then hey I might want a little bit more or say this was a client photo might the client might want a little bit more background a little bit less background uh, you really never know so let's shoot a few uh, we've dropped that shutter speed now to 1 15th of a second so we've doubled the amount of ambient light in the background, and that's all that's being affected. Uh, let's go back to this one. The flash is staying the same in between these two. Okay, we're getting a little bit more ambient on the on the camera, but that's it. 
Uh, now we're back to a 30th of a second. And now we're at a 60th of a second. So we're actually getting rid of light back there. Okay? It's making it darker, making the camera more prominent. But again, the flash is not changing here. Only the ambient as we're adjusting our shutter speed up and down. There you go. There's one more. All right, dropping that even more. And last one. There we go. Even less ambient. Let me just flip through those real quick. Uh, I think that's everything. I'd love to see some of your flash photographs. If you want to post them on Flickr group or if you want to post them on Facebook, tweet them to me. Put a link in the comments on the blog. Anywhere you want to post a link to them, that'd be great. I'd love to see them. I'll gladly comment on them if you'd like me to. Greg Cazillo, Cazillo.com. Thanks, guys.